The Trap Trick series of cards are an all-female, all-earth, all-rank-4 or level-4 series of monsters that either fall into the insect or plant typing. Every Trap Tricks monster has a total combined attack and defense value of 2,800. The only exception to this is their Link monster, since, well, it doesn't have a defense value, so... Oh well. These cards made their first debut in the 2013 booster pack, Judgment of Light, with later support being implemented in Primal Origin, Code of the Duelist, Soul Fusion, and most recently in Eternity Code. A Trap Tricks deck's playstyle is all about control. The idea behind them is to restrict your opponent from getting a good footing in the duel by causing them to fall down as many pitfalls as possible to keep them easy prey. This is achieved by the fact that the Trap Tricks monsters work together with the whole series of cards. As some of the monsters can bring those traps from the deck or from the graveyard straight to the field, while others can even absorb the power of them from the deck and use them as if they were on the field. In regards to their proficiency with traps, they are also completely immune to the trap hole card effects themselves, meaning that their own strength can't be used against them. You can see references to this immunity in their card arts, as they reside in their own traps without fear of harm. However, the true beauty of this deck is that as the trap hole series of cards grow separately, in conjunction it means that this deck too will become more powerful by extension. For instance, Gravedigger's Trap Hole is the newest buff to the deck. 2k damage after negate? It's a, it's a pretty sweet ability. In terms of the archetype's designs, however, well, they all have the appearance of young girls that dwell within a forest. However, like most things in this world, looks can be deceiving, for you see, each one is connected to something very sinister. Behind their cute appearances, a predator lies in wait, using the allure and innocence of these girls' appearances to lead unsuspecting victims to their deaths. As a wise man once said, It's a trap! Yes, the Trap Tricks girls lead wanderers towards their nests, to be consumed by their monstrous forms. It is unclear if the pair work together symbiotically, or one or the other is a master and servant. However, to me, I believe the Trap Tricks monsters all embody the traits of the anglerfish. You see, the anglerfish is a predator that uses a glowing lure-like growth on its head to entrance and bring its prey closer so that it can strike. The Trap Tricks monsters themselves are simply an alluring bait to lure in prey. On the inside, they are hollow and empty, simple tools to be used by their true monstrous forms. But hey, nothing's confirmed. If you think the Trap Tricks girls are sentient, then well, I'll let you be the judge. But for now, how about we take a look at each one of the individual Trap Tricks cards and see what carnivorous plant, insect, or arachnid they are connected to. Trigger warning! You're gonna see some real creepy stuff in today's video, so be warned. Trap Tricks Atrax. Her effect is, this card is unaffected by the effects of whole normal trap cards. Keep in mind for the rest of this video, this part of her effect applies to every other Trap Tricks monster. So this is the last time you'll hear it for brevity, but know that they all have this immunity effect to the whole cards. Her unique effect, however, is that you can activate whole normal trap cards from your hand. The activation and effects of normal trap cards activated on your side of the field cannot be negated. A card's artwork has been slightly censored for international release by adding covers for her torso. Atrax's true form is that of an Australian funnel web spider. Her name of Atrax alludes to this since there are three differing types of these spiders, Atrax being one of them. What's unique about this type of spider is that it builds a funnel shaped web which it uses to trap its prey. The spider waits inside the funnel for the prey to fall onto the web where upon contact it rushes out and drags its prey deep into the funnel, where it consumes it. Trap Tricks Dionea, known in the Japanese as Trap Tricks Teo. Her effect is when this card is normal summoned, you can target one Trap Tricks monster in your graveyard, special summon that target in defense position. When this card is special summoned, you can target one whole normal trap card in your graveyard, set that target, but banish it during the end phase of your next turn if it is still on the field. You can only use the effect of Trap Tricks Dionea once per turn. This monster too has had its artwork censored by adding covers for her torso. Dionea's true form is that of the Dionea Muscipula, more commonly known as the Venus Flytrap. 
The flytrap is a plant that eats living prey. It does this via a special mechanism built into its leaves. You see, the two leaves sit open and inviting with a sweet nectar. When the prey lands between the leaves, its tiny hairs are triggered, snapping the leaves shut and sealing the prey inside, where it slowly begins to be digested. Fun fact, it also has some safety mechanisms built in too. One is that the trap only springs if the hairs are triggered twice within a few seconds. This is to make sure that it is catching like live prey rather than falling debris because it doesn't want to waste its energy on a stick that lands on it, for example. And once it's closed, it only stays closed if the prey continues to struggle inside. As again, if it turns out to be a stick, it'll just stay still. So why would it want to digest that? Trap Tricks Genlessy. Its effect is you can tribute this card set two whole normal traps with different names, one from your deck and one from your graveyard, but banish them when they leave the field. You can only use this effect of Trap Tricks Genlessy once per turn. Genlessy's true form is that of the similarly named Genlessy, another type of carnivorous plant. It is more commonly known as the corkscrew plant, as it has a long tendril-like arm that spirals into the ground. This is not in fact the plant's roots, although it does keep it anchored to the ground, it is actually one of its leaves that has been heavily modified. This corkscrew is hollow and it attracts tiny prey to come inside of it, however, unbeknownst to them, the tiny hairs all point in a downward fashion. This means that once the prey goes in, they can't go back out. Their only choice is to move forward, deeper and deeper into the plant, closer and closer to their doom. Traptrix Mantis, known in the Japanese as Traptrix Ranker. Her effect is when this card is normal summoned, you can add one Traptrix monster from your deck to your hand. Once per turn, quick effect, you can target one set spell or trap you control, return that target to the hand, then you can set one spell or trap from your hand. Her artwork was slightly altered to cover her waist for international release. Mantis's true form is that of, you guessed it, a praying mantis. Named so since they always look like they are praying since their little claws are always tucked in and folded. How adorable. Well, maybe not, as if we look closer at Traptrix Mantis's colour scheme, we see she is in fact based on a variation of Mantis called the Hymen Opus Coronatus, more commonly known as the Orchid Mantis. <laughs> I've caught one of those on Animal Crossing. Though beautiful, the way the Orchid Mantis hunts its prey is, well, it's pretty creepy. It blends itself into a flower, making itself look like one of its petals. However, the tail of the creature has a dark spot on it. So what it does is it thrashes around to make it look like that little dark spot is a fly buzzing around the flower. This lowers the guards of other flies as they feel confident to approach the flower. And once they get in close enough, that's when the orchid mantis strikes. Beautiful but deadly. Also, I'm pretty sure I read somewhere that mantises decapitate their partners. Oh no, it is true. Basically, after a mantis bangs, the female chops off the head of its mate and eats it. Uh, out of all the insects, I definitely would not like to be a bale mantis. <laughs> Traptrix Mamello, known in the Japanese as Traptrix to Lion. When this card is normal summoned, you can add one whole normal trap card from your deck to your hand. When this card is special summoned, target one spell or trap your opponent controls. Destroy that target. Mamello's true form is that of the Antelion, which is where its Japanese name comes from. The name itself is a mashup between an ant and a lion. Named so as Antelions are a powerful predator. They make up a subgroup of the Mamelion today family. Antelions themselves encompassing around around 2,000 species of insects. Antelions, when they are just larvae, are able to entrap their prey by digging pits. They do this by lining the walls with fine slippery sand grains, so that the slightest movement will cause a mini avalanche. This will drive anything that's caught inside of it to the bottom of the pit, where the antelion lies in wait. Think the Sarlacc from Star Wars. In fact, oh look at that, uh, it, the Sarlacc was based on this. No way. Traptrix Nepenthes, known in the Japanese as Traptrix Kazura. Her effect is if you activate a whole normal trap card, except during the damage step, you can add to your hand, or special summon one Traptrix monster from your deck, except Traptrix Nepenthes. You can only use this effect of Traptrix Nepenthes once per turn. Altered for international release by having a stomach covered and a skirt lengthened, Nepenthes' true form is that of the Nepenthes, more commonly known as a pitcher plant. The pitcher plant is another carnivorous plant that not only eats insects, 
but under certain circumstances is even able to consume small rodents should they be unfortunate enough to find itself ensnared in its trap. As its name implies, the pitcher plant is designed in the style of a pitcher with an open lid. When a creature or insect lands on its leaves, they will soon realize its walls are extremely slippery. The prey falls deep within the plant cavity into a pool of digestive fluid. Unable to free themselves due to the slipperiness, they will eventually drown and be dissolved into the plant, becoming its nutrients. Traptrix raphalesia known to the Japanese as Traptrix Frezia, requires two level four monsters. This card is unaffected by trap effects while it has an Xyz material. Traptrix monsters you control, except Traptrix Raphalesia, cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects. Your opponent cannot target Traptrix monsters you control, except Traptrix Raphalesia with card effects. Once per turn, during either player's turn, you can detach one Xyz material from this card and send one whole normal trap card that meets its activation conditions from your deck to the graveyard. This effect becomes that trap card's effect when that card is activated. This Xyz monster has been censored too for its international release, having more fur and cloth added to its clothing to cover her up a little bit more. Raphalesia's true form is that of the Raphalesia plant. The Raphalesia despite its huge, monstrous form, is not actually a carnivorous plant, like all the other Traptrix's forms. Instead, the Raphalesia is a parasitic plant. It latches itself onto another plant for its survival, since it itself has no roots and leaves to use for photosynthesis and absorption. Instead, it embeds its tendrils into the host plant to absorb the nutrients from it instead. The Raphalesia is said to be one of the most horrific smells plants in existence, since it produces a smell that is said to be most akin to rotting flesh. This smell does have a purpose. It is used to attract insects in order for it to pollinate. Yeah, I really hope I never smell that flower my entire life. Traptrix Alomorus requires two level four monsters. This card is unaffected by trap effects while it has an Xyz material. You can only use each of the following effects of Traptrix Alomorus once per turn. You can detach two materials from this card, special summon one level four insect or plant monster from your graveyard. If an opponent's monsters leaves the field because of your card effect and is now in the graveyard or banished, except during the damage step, you can detach one material from this card and target one of them, special summon it to your field. This monster's true form is that of the Alomrius, which are tiny ants that live inside of plants. You've heard of ants in your pants, right? Well, how about ants in your plants, eh? <laughs> These ants have a very unique ability, and that is to build very small, complex traps using loose debris from inside the host plant they reside in, in order to trap even tinier insects for them to eat. Trap Trick Serra requires one non-Link Traptrix monster. This Link Summon card is unaffected by trap effects. You can only use each of the following effects of Traptrix Serra once per turn, and not during the damage step. If a normal trap card is activated, you can special summon one Traptrix monster from your deck with a different name than the cards you control. If your other Traptrix monster's effect is activated, you can set one whole normal trap directly from your deck. The final Traptrix monster, Serra's true form is that of the Drosera, carnivorous plants. These genus of plants use droplets of their own body fluid to lure in fresh prey. The sweet smell lures them in, where upon contact they become stuck to the plant. Death usually takes around 15 minutes since the cause is either from exhaustion, from thrashing around trying to escape, or from being suffocated by the mucus. After this, they are slowly broken down into a nutrient-filled soup for the plant to feed on. You're not going to look at this monster the same way, are you? Or, for that matter, any of the trap tricks is. Let's be honest. They are frightening. And what's most frightening is these things are real. Oh my god. So, that was all the monsters in the deck. There are a few support cards, such as Trap Trick. You can banish one normal trap from your deck, except Trap Trick, and set one card with the same name directly from your deck. Also, it can be activated this turn. You can only activate one trap card for the rest of this turn after this effect resolves. You can only activate one Trap Trick per turn. There's also Trap Trick's Trap Hole Nightmare, known in the Japanese as Entrapping Pit Fall. When a monster that was special summoned this turn activates its effect on your opponent's side of the field, negate that effect, and if you do, destroy that card. Fun fact, in the original Japanese, this card is not actually technically a part of the archetype since it doesn't have the Trap Tricks kanji in its card name. However, this artwork is the result of Trap Trick. 
which is pretty cool. And we might as well do a quick mention to all the trap hole cards that support the archetype. Let's quickly blast through these and keep your eye out for the guys in the artwork that appear in many of them. Acid trap hole, adhesion trap hole, bottomless trap hole, break off trap hole, DD trap hole, deep dark trap hole, double trap hole, floodgate trap hole, giant trap hole, network trap hole, time space trap hole, Trap Hole, Trap Hole of Spikes, Trap Chicks Trap Hole Nightmare, Treacherous Trap Hole, and Void Trap Hole. And with that guys, that with the Trap Chicks archetype done. Knowing me, as soon as I put this video out, Trap Chicks are going to get new supports. But regardless, let me know what you think of the Trap Chicks monsters. Has your outlook on them completely changed? Knowing more about what they are based on. But before we go, I want to give a big thank you to all the people that make this video possible. My sponsors. So with YouTube earnings down, you guys are more appreciated than ever. So first and foremost, a big thank you to my platinum backer, Nemochan77. Thank you very much. As well as to my YouTube supporters and gold backers on Patreon, Silver Defender, Michael Wachlorski, Goosey Q, Yu-Gi-Oh! Everything, Rias Gremory, Michael Blaze, and Yokaido Kenya. As well to all my silver backers too. Guys, thank you all so much for supporting the channel, and I'll catch you all later. Bye everyone.